He loved to fish. He was a terrific fly fisherman. Broke either hand, depending on which side of the river he was on. He was good. And he just liked to catch fish on a fly. He hung his fly rod up in the garage on Dutch Avenue. After supper, he would just stick it through the window in the car, go up to the Ten Mile River to go fishing, and he'd take me with him. And I, I liked to fish too, but I didn't know anything about fly fishing. I just had a little thing with a worm on the end of it, you know. And in the summertime, fish aren't biting on, not trout anyway, on worms. So I'd go up there and go up and down the bank of the river trying to catch trout while he was, was catching them. And then it got dark and he couldn't see any more to fish. He always caught a lot of fish. And then about 9 o'clock or so, not 10 o'clock, come home. I would always ask her background. Oh, what does that matter, she would say. I know she had a, somebody in the Revolutionary War who came from Vermont, except her father died when she was I think she was over 17. I admired her because she always dressed beautifully. She worked, she worked, really took over the office, but plus the garden club. She was really very creative. She could do most anything. Well, like what, her daughter. And like Laura, her granddaughter, she could upholster furniture. She initially didn't I don't think she wanted Graham to marry me because I was Irish. But I think she came to like me quite a lot. Graham, could you talk about Dindy and Graham's flowers? Oh, flowers. Both right. my mother and fa father were uh, terrific. My father was grew roses. Beautiful. I mean, he was known for his roses, and he treated them like his babies, you know. And my mother, the same way. That's sort of a spiritual thing. I mean, flowers are, there's a third dimension. I wasn't around that much. Gwyneth would have known because she was, but I, I left as a sophomore and a junior in, uh, at Gunnery and uh, never came back, basically. I had to serve in an, uh, on board a ship for six weeks uh, down in Norfolk. But it was only six weeks and the summer lasted all summer. So my best friend was up in the Adirondacks working as a bartender and, I, and he said, why don't you come up? So I didn't have a car, of course. So I, my father said you can't go so so I uh, I said I said I am but I was pretty stubborn and so was he so I when he didn't he because of his TB he never got up first thing in the morning he always thought it was good for his health to sleep until 8 30 or 9 o'clock so uh, I got up early and uh, packed a little bag and went downstairs and and opened the door to go out, and my mother came down after me and gave me five bucks. And so I went down to uh, the corner of Dutcher Avenue and hitchhiked all the way to the Adirondacks. And uh, uh, I stayed with him the first night at the motel, and uh, the phone rang at the bar, and uh, it was my father wanting me to know if I was okay. <laughs> so all was forgiven at that point. Well, I think he figured he'd made a mistake. I wasn't a kid anymore, I was a 
sophomore in college, you know. And he was moody at home. He was like a devil at home and, a, and an angel on the street, you know, that saying. I might have been two to four. Uh, he caught pneumonia, which was a death sentence for a guy who only had a third of his lungs. So he repaired to his, to his bedroom for about two weeks. It just didn't much come out. He was just, uh, I suppose, I mean, I never knew that side of him, but my mother was tough on my mother. She went out and got her insurance license, so if that ever happened again, because that's how they made their living. And he and my mother, as years went on, even though they were partners, they'd sit in the kitchen at night, the two of them, and drink a couple of beers and, and talk about the business, and it would be okay. But as years progressed, that didn't happen as much, and it got worse. Later, much later in life, we had a nice talk about, and I came in late, he was sitting up late, and so we got talking, and he started telling me about his tuberculosis and the Adirondacks, and how horrible it was, you know, spitting up blood. Most people died from it. His, his brother had died of it, and his grandfather had died of it. It was, it was a real contagious disease back in those days. And then when I started doing genealogy, uh, I started researching, and I found out that he was a lot different guy, a lot better than I might have envisioned. Uh, it was good.